Inoculating Plants. Now I'm going to talk about inoculating plants. The overall goal in inoculating plants is to get the spores onto the plants. So there are various methods of doing this. You can use hand inoculation or you can use a vacuum pump to spray rust onto plants. Now what I have here is a tray of the 20 differentials. These differentials are ready to inoculate. They have been growing for seven days after planting. And the key point that I'd like to show is that the first leaf is fully emerged on these plants and the second leaf is beginning to grow. When we phenotype or read the differentials, we're gonna look at the first or primary leaf. And so as long as that leaf is fully emerged, the plants are ready to inoculate. Now I'm going to talk about the method of hand inoculation of rust onto plants. And so if you have an oil solution that is a fresh mixture of oil and spores, you can simply get your finger wet with that solution and wipe down the primary leaves of the plants that you would like to inoculate. This method of inoculating plants is effective, but as you can see, it's relatively slow. I'm now going to describe a relatively faster method of inoculating plants. And so if you have a lot of plants or several different isolates that you would like to inoculate onto plants, you might want to use a vacuum pump to speed things up. Now, right next to me is an inoculation booth. And in this booth is a relatively enclosed chamber with some plants inside that we would like to inoculate. And this is a tube that's connected to a vacuum pump. When we take this tube and attach an inoculator to it, so an inoculator is similar to a collector, and also attach a capsule that has oil and spores below the inoculator, we have an apparatus that can be used to inoculate plants. So normally what would happen is this vacuum is blowing air out of this tube, and the air would normally come out of the top. If we place our finger on the top of the apparatus, the air will then blow out the side of the inoculator. When this happens, spores and oil will be drawn through the inoculator and sprayed out of the inoculator. Now in this inoculation booth, we have our plants and the differentials are sitting on this tray. We have uh, an automatic method to spin the plants around on the tray in order to inoculate all sides of the tray and not just get one side. So I'm now going to demonstrate um, inoculating the plants with a vacuum pump. This method of inoculating plants with a vacuum pump, as you can see, is relatively fast. Now, after you've inoculated your plants, what you need to do is take the tray out of the inoculation booth and begin to dry it. If you are inoculating more than one isolate of rust, you need to sterilize the inoculation booth before you begin another inoculation. In order to do that, you can simply spray down the inoculation booth with water. What this will allow for is all of the spores that are floating around in the air will be caught by the water and taken to the sides or the bottom of the booth. And so I'm just going to take out this tray and to sterilize this inoculation booth, we can turn on the automatic sprayer. Now, if you don't have this automatic um, sprayer, you can simply just take a water bottle and spray down your inoculation booth. After you have inoculated plants with oil, it is necessary to allow the oil to evaporate. If you have plants with oil and place them directly into a dew chamber, the oil will actually burn the leaves. And so it is necessary to allow the oil to evaporate. 
In order to do that, you can simply place the plants out in the open for at least 20 minutes. After the plants have dried for 20 minutes, allowing the oil to evaporate, the next step would be to take these plants and place them into a dew chamber. Now I'm going to talk about the dew chamber period that is necessary for stem rest infection. After you have inoculated your plants and allowed the oil to dry, it is necessary to place the plants in a dew chamber to allow the stem rust infection to occur. At the Serial Disease Laboratory, what we do is we keep our plants in a dew chamber for 12 to 14 hours. Now this 12 to 14 hours of dew has about nine hours of darkness, and then the last several hours have light. And what we're trying to do in this dew chamber period is simulate the infection cycle that is happening out in the field. And so this dew chamber period, having both moisture in the darkness simulating night and then light and moisture for a few hours simulating morning. And so normally a rust spore would land on a plant and then there would be overnight dew in darkness. In the morning there would still be dew but there would also be light. Now this combination of moisture and also light for a few hours at the end is necessary for stem rust infection to occur. A dew chamber can be relatively simple, and so I'm going to demonstrate how you can use a plastic bag to make a dew chamber for your plants that you have inoculated. We have this pot of plants that we would like to keep in a dew chamber. This is a plastic bag. If you spray water inside of the plastic bag, and invert the plastic bag over the plant, this setup will provide a dew chamber for the plants. At this point, I'd like to say that if you're going to use this method, we recommend that you construct this plastic bag dew chamber in the evening and then place the pot with the plastic bag into the greenhouse. So this will allow for a dew chamber for the plant over the dark night. And then in the morning, light will penetrate through the greenhouse, through the clear plastic bag, and stimulate the infection in the morning. If you have several plants that you would like to place into a dew chamber, or if you would like to control the environment, you can use an automatic dew chamber. Now as an example of this, we have here these dew chambers where humidifiers are attached to the side, which are providing moisture. Now since these dew chambers are inside, there are fluorescent light bulbs that are attached to the top. And so during this 12 to 14 hour dew chamber period, the lights are turned on for the last three to four hours. After the dew chamber period, the plants need to be dried out. And so before moving the plants to a greenhouse or into a growth chamber, you should open up the dew chamber to allow the plants to dry out before moving to a greenhouse. This will reduce contamination. After the dew chamber period, plants should be kept for two weeks before reading or phenotyping them. And so what you can do is take your plants from the dew chamber, let them dry, and then place them in a greenhouse for two weeks before they are read. At the Serial Disease Laboratory, we do something slightly different. We take our plants from the dew chamber, and after they have dried, we place them into a growth chamber for five days. Now, placing them in a growth chamber for five days allows us to control the environment to a very strict level. And this um, reduces much of the variability in race analysis. After these five days, we then move the plants from the growth chamber into a greenhouse.